We're going to use this clinical question as an example and start with how to break it down into PICO format. A 70-year-old female newly diagnosed with osteoporosis presents for consultation about IV vitamin therapy to manage the osteoporosis. So this is how I broke down this clinical question into PICO format. The problem is osteoporosis. In this case, there are two aspects to the intervention. One aspect of the intervention is that it is IV therapy. So I've started one intervention column with the word intravenous. And then the second aspect of the intervention is, of course, vitamins. So the second column for my intervention is vitamin. I chose to break that out into two separate columns because for the purposes of organizing my search, I like each column of my PICO concept map to just be one concept, and then I'm going to combine them all in the end. Please note that I don't have anything under the C for the comparator. Very often in terms of doing database searches, you don't need to search for the comparator if the comparator is just standard care, especially because you're often not going to find articles or research studies that directly compare the intervention you're interested in with some other kind of intervention or with standard care. You're more likely to find research studies that evaluate the effectiveness of the specific intervention that you're interested in. So very often you can just leave out the comparator as part of your literature search. And for the outcome, I wanted to make the search a little more specific and define what do we mean by managing the osteoporosis. So I've decided to put bone density as the specific outcome that we're interested in. So then I can use this PICO chart to structure and organize my search as I approach searching in PubMed. While you are a student at PACE, you always want to navigate to PubMed through the library homepage. PubMed is available for free online at pubmed.gov, but there's limited free full text. So while you're a student at PACE, when you access PubMed through the PACE library homepage and authenticate with your PACE portal username and password when off campus, you'll have access to all of PACE's database subscriptions for full text journal articles and also have access to our interlibrary loan system to get any other articles we don't have available for no additional cost. To access PubMed through the library homepage, I'm going to go first to the library homepage, library.pace.edu, and click on the databases tab. I can either scroll down under select a subject to nursing and medicine and then click go, or I can select the letter P and scroll down to PubMed. So you'll notice that for the time being, I'm recording this in January of 2020, the PubMed homepage defaults to what's called the new PubMed. And there's a note at the top that says for legacy PubMed to go to PubMed.gov. PubMed is in the process of changing over to a completely new interface. The new interface preserves all of the basic functions of PubMed, but is significantly different than the old PubMed, what the National Library of Medicine is calling legacy PubMed. And they've said that they are going to retire legacy PubMed sometime in the first half of 2020. As PubMed users, it is probably best to start getting used to the new PubMed because that is going to be the only PubMed interface available in the future. So I'm going to show how to do this search in the new PubMed. On the PubMed homepage, you see we start with a blank search box. And the way I'm generally going to build my search is to do each column of my Pico chart and then add them all together at the end. So I'm going to start with my P, which is osteoporosis. When you start typing in PubMed, some suggestions pop up below. Those are just searches that other users have done. So you can use them or ignore them depending on what it is that you're looking for. We're going to ignore all this stuff, ignore our results, ignore the total numbers, all of that because we need to build our entire search. What you want to do actually is just click on Advanced at the top under the search screen. And this shows me my search history. And if I click on this little arrow under details, it's going to show me the search, the query that PubMed actually ran. PubMed uses automatic term mapping, as you learned in module one. So when you type a word into the PubMed search box, it doesn't just look for that word. It actually runs a more complex query using automatic term mapping. In this case, when I look at my search details, I can see that the automatic term mapping worked pretty nicely. It mapped to osteoporosis as a mesh term, meaning it will find articles that have been specifically indexed with the mesh term osteoporosis. Where it says osteoporosis all fields or osteoporoses, it means it is going to pick up articles that have one of those words anywhere. And then it does also pick up postmenopausal osteoporosis, which is, you know, not strictly necessary for the search, but probably doesn't do any harm in this case. 
Now I'm going to move on to the next part of my PICO chart, which is intravenous. And I can, because I'm in the advanced search screen, I can add it to this search box here at the top. Click add, and then search. Again, I'm ignoring my actual search results, and I'm going to go to advanced, and click on the little details arrow to see how that search mapped. And I can see, okay, it mapped pretty well. It picked up any articles that have the word intravenous anywhere or intravenously or the alternate British spellings of those words. You notice that it didn't map to a MeSH term. If you want, you can separately open up the MeSH database and check what the MeSH term is, which in the new PubMed admittedly is a little clunky. So you have to open up the PubMed homepage and what I recommend is doing it in a separate tab. And then from the PubMed homepage, you can click on the link for the MeSH database. The MeSH database interface hasn't changed. It is still the same as Legacy PubMed. So if I search for intravenous, I can see that there are some different uh, MeSH terms that are useful, infusion intravenous or administration intravenous. So if I look at administration intravenous, I can see that that is the more general MeSH term for delivering substances intravenously. So I could add that to my search if I want. I'm going to select in this search field instead of all fields, scroll down to MeSH terms, copy over administration comma intravenous, and paste it in, add it to my query box, and then hit search and then go to advanced. To combine these two searches for just the word intravenous in anywhere or for the MeSH term in administration intravenous, click on actions, add query for the first one, and then for the second one, add with or. So what that is, is it's gonna combine those two searches with the Boolean operator or to say that I want any articles that have been indexed with a specific MeSH term administration intravenous or any articles where the word intravenous or intravenously with both American and British spellings appear anywhere in the article. So it's just going to broaden up my search a little bit. And I hit search. And it did give me more results. If I go to advanced, I can see I got about 400,000 results instead of my initial search for intravenous only got about 336,000. So now I need to do the next part of my intervention, which is vitamin therapy. I'm leaving out the word therapy because that can be too limiting. There are many different ways that researchers could refer to vitamin therapy without using the word therapy, so I'm just going to leave that out and stick to the most important part of that concept. I'm going to add and search, and then go back to my advanced search to look at the search details. The way the automatic term mapping worked for this search, it actually added a lot of stuff that I probably don't really want in my search. So I can edit this query, which admittedly in the new PubMed is clunkier than it was in the old PubMed. The way I do this is to copy this specific query, paste it into my query box, and then I can edit it in the query box. So I don't need vitamins with a possessive or vitamin with an E, or vitamins with an E, or the pharmacological action, which refers to how the substance acts on the body. So I'm going to delete all of that and just have vitamins as a mesh term, or vitamins all fields, or vitamin all fields, meaning looking for those words anywhere, and click search. Then I want to go back to advanced and delete my first search for vitamin that included those extra search terms that I don't really want. So under actions, I will select delete, confirm that yes, I do want to delete that search, and then that leaves me with my neater search for vitamins. In this case, it didn't make a huge difference in the number of results, but it's just a little, a little more focused and a little cleaner. So now I can move on to my outcome, which is bone density. It's always a good idea to check the search details in PubMed to see how the automatic term mapping interpreted your search. In this case, it worked really nicely, picked up bone density as a mesh term, or the words bone and density anywhere but not necessarily together, or the exact phrase bone density. So now I have all aspects of my PICO, and I can start combining them to get to my final set of search results. 
So for my first search for osteoporosis, I'm going to click on the three little dots under Actions and select Add Query. And then I'm going to move up to what for me is my search six, my combined search for intravenous, different versions of the word intravenous anywhere, or the specific MESH term administration intravenous. Under Actions, I'm going to select Add with AND. I'm going to do the same for my vitamin search and my bone density search. I want to add these with the search operator AND because what that does is it combines all these searches saying that I need to have articles that have all aspects of this clinical question in it. It has to have something to do with osteoporosis, something to do with intravenous administration, vitamins, and bone density, all of those concepts. And now when I hit search, it gives me a pretty reasonable number of results, 160 which is not a bad place to start, especially because to start you're just gonna skim titles and maybe abstract. You are not expected to read 160 articles. But I can use the filters in the left menu to narrow down my results even further. So I can see that I have an, a filter immediately available to limit to articles in English. I can limit to a specific date range by using the year slider or I can quickly select the filter to limit to publication date the last five years. And I've got some additional filters down here that I have added. The way to access those additional filters is to click on additional filters, select the category that you want, such as sex or age, select the specific filters that you want to apply, and then click show. But then you have to actually apply those filters by clicking on the little box for it and your number of results will start dropping down. So now I'm down to only 14 results, all of which relate exactly to my clinical question, are in English, published in the last five years, and have been identified as being about women older than 65. If there is an article that you're interested in looking at, click on the article title and make sure when you're looking at the full text links that you click on this gray search for item button. That is the button from Pace. This other link, unless it says free full text, is going to take me to the publisher's website and I'm probably going to hit a paywall where it's going to ask me to pay for the article. When I click on that gray search for item link, it searches all of Pace's journal holdings and will tell me if we do have access to this article in full text, in this case we do, and I can click on any of these links to access it, or it will tell me if I need to request the result from Interlibrary Loan, in which case I can easily request it and you'll get it online within at most a day or two. Back at the article rec, the screen with the information for that individual article, if I want to go back to my search results, click on search results, and I can get back to my full list of results. Anytime you have questions about PubMed, especially as the National Library of Medicine is transitioning to the new PubMed, on the PubMed homepage, there are links to learn about PubMed. And I'm guessing that they will be adding more tutorials and more videos for the new PubMed as it gets fully rolled out. So click on the FAQs and user guide and they generally have good help available for how to use PubMed and how to do different kinds of searches or different specific tasks in PubMed. You can also, of course, always reach out to the librarians here at Pace and we're happy to help you in any way that we can.